Good day future LPTs. So in today's review video, we will be discussing about the theory of moral development of Lawrence Kohlberg. How do people develop morality? So this is a question that has no definite answer until now, but there are many speculations from parents, religious leaders, philosophers, psychologists, teachers, and others about how morality was developed. But before we proceed from this theory, we must first understand what is morality. So it is defined as principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong or good and bad behavior. A particular system of values and principles of conduct, especially one held by a specified person or society. So that is morality. This is Professor Lawrence Kohlberg, born October 25, 1927, and died January 17, 1987. So he is an American psychologist, educator for his theory of moral development. So he was the pioneer of the moral development. This theory was modified and expanded anchored from the Jean Piaget's previous works in the cognitive development. But here it was more centered on explaining how do children develop moral reasoning. So Jean Piaget designed a specific task or what we call Piagetian tasks to learn about the cognitive development of the children. Meanwhile, Kohlberg, he presented dilemmas and asked for the children's responses and he analyzed the reasoning behind the responses. So that is the difference between Piaget and Kohlberg. So this is the paradigm of the theory of moral development. So, it has three levels, the pre-conventional, conventional, at post-conventional level. And each level has two stages. Like in pre-conventional level, um, stage one is punishment or obedience and stage two is mutual defeat. Meanwhile, in conventional level is stage three, social approval, and stage four, um, law, law and order. So that is the paradigm. Let's discuss first the level one, pre-conventional morality. So pre-conventional morality is the most primitive stage of this moral development. It lasts until the age of nine. At this period, children's choices are influenced mainly by adults perceptions and implications so mostly in that age we really used to follow our parents orders or the adults or the elders orders so mo commonly we didn't exceed on that so pre-conventional uh, morality has uh, two stages first stage is punishment or obedience and stage two is mutual benefit stage one punishment or obedience so one is motivated by fear of punishment a person will act in order to avoid punishment so this is the earliest stage of the moral development um the authority of the elders is instilled in the children. So their um, instructions, their orders is absolute and fixed. So for a 
a children or a child uh, to avoid a punishment or a consequence, he or she will follow the instruction of the elder. So that is stage one. So stage two in the pre-conventional morality. So stage two is mutual benefit. One is motivated to act by the benefit that one may obtain later. You scratch your back, I'll scratch yours. So, it is the exchange in the moral development. Wherein, the children will recip uh, reciprocate what has been done to them. Meaning, if someone do good deeds to them then they will do good deeds to the other person and vice versa let's proceed to level to conventional morality the acceptance of social rules governing what is good and moral marks the next stage of moral development during this period Adolescents and adults internalize the moral standards they have learned from their role models and society. So this period also focuses on the acceptance of authority and conforming to the norms of the group. There are two stages at this level. So stage 3 is the social approval and stage 4 is the law and order. Stage 3. Social Approval One is motivated by what others expect in behavior. Good boy, good girl. The people act because they value how they will appear to others. They give importance to what other people say. So, in this stage, the person is living to the social expectations and rules given by his surrounding, by his peers. So, dapat magmukha siyang matino ayon sa paningin nung nasa paligid niya. So, that, that factor, his surrounding, greatly influences his choices, his decisions, and his actions. Stage 4. Law and Order One is motivated to act in order to uphold law and order. The person will follow the law because it is the law. So in this stage, the, uh, the people begin to consider the society as a whole when making a judgment. Dapat kung ano yung makakabuti sa karamihan, yun yung decisions at yun yung actions nila. The focus in this stage is maintaining law in order by following the rules, the duty, and respecting each other, and doing fairness with justice and dignity. So, everyone respects the law and the authority. Ayun yung stage na to. So, before a person will choose, will decide, and act, he will think about this, about the authority, about respect, and about rules. Last level, level 3, the post-conventional morality. So, moral reasoning is based on enduring or consistent principles. It is not just recognizing the law, but the principles behind the law. So, it is divided into stages. Stage 5 is social contract, and stage 6 is the universal principles. Stage 5, social contract. So, laws that are wrong can be changed. One will act based on social justice and common good. So, in here, everyone has their own circumstances, has their own uh, values, opinions, beliefs, 
that are unique to everyone even though we have universe uh, we have laws diba? but then sometimes we do not follow it because of differing cultures different opinions diba? not everything is appropriate to everyone meaning hindi porket yan yung standard ng society is appropriate na yan for everyone. It is not. Because they have different opinions. So, but then, everyone should agree with the universal standards for the common good. Pero, not necessarily that that common good can please everybody. Lastly, stage 6, the universal principles. This is associated with the development of one's con conscience, having a set of standards that drives one to possess moral responsibility to make societal changes regardless of consequence to oneself. So, the people who have contributed to societal change are this these are just some of the people who can do that uh, sir martin luther king jr and mahatma gandhi but aside from them there are more we have mother teresa as well so here this is the final level of the moral development so the moral reasoning is based on universal and ethical principles and abstract reasoning. Actually, the moral development theory can be identified in a classroom situation. So, just like this scenario, the whole class is cheating an exam in mathematics. So, one person answered the exam and passed it unto her friends until it reaches the whole class. So, the whole class knew the situation, but not necessarily that everyone is involved, that everyone cheats. It's just most of them cheats the exam. So, stage 1, punishment or obedience. MJ saw the exam cheating, but he don't want to be involved in any case because he is afraid of the consequences. So, MJ don't want to take part in cheating and don't want to com uh, file a complaint because he will be involved and he will surely um, receive punishment or other consequences. Stage 2 Mutual Benefit Ira saw the scenario. She then immediately ex use herself in the examination and go to the faculty and complain to the subject teacher about what happened. So why did she do that? Because she thought that she may have a benefit or a gain after doing this. Stage 3 Social Approval so, JM won't speak about it. Even the teacher asked her what happened and how it happened and who originated the cheating. She insisted that she don't know anything. So, her classmates approved what she did. In the image of her class, she is a good friend. She won't sell her classmates because of that. Kaya yung image niya para sa lahat ay maganda. Except for the teacher, of course. Stage 4, Law and Order. So, Teacher Dave came right after the exam. He asks who cheats and where the leakage originates. So, why did he do that? So, he do this for fairness and justice for those who have reviewed and 
cheating is illegal. So last um, level, stage 5 social contract. So Carlo knew the whole scenario. Though he didn't participate on it because it is bad, it is illegal, but he won't also sell his classmate to his math teacher. So why? Because he insisted on his own thought that his teacher, Dave, is not teaching at all that's why for him he should uh, the teacher should not blame his classmate by cheating on the exam because at the first place it his fault and the justice there is justice to what his classmates have done last stage stage six universal principles the guidance office calls for everyone involved they emphasize and justified why rules order justice and fairness are important they emphasize morality by facing the consequences of their own actions they reassure that the learning not just the learning in mathematics, but the learning of life is instilled among their students. These are the references of this presentation. So if you have questions, you may post it in the comment section. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Marshall D. Teacher.